Hi, I'm Harold Bell for the Legends of Inside Sports. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation uh, with the one and only uh, Jim Brown. Um, we're talking about how can we find a way uh, to get some of these athletes to reach back and help their, their communities. And I'm in the process of telling Jim that I was at Miami for the NBA All-Star Game, and uh, I attended uh, the players association, NBA Players Association meeting and exactly what transpired. I want you to hear this conversation. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Yeah. My name is Magic Johnson. Uh, like I said, I was in Miami last week and the Players Association had a meeting of all the players that who were in town, the All-Stars and everything, and had some of the, the old timers in there and they had some of the ages in there. And Charlie Grantham, who is the, the NBA Players Association, uh, stood up and made a proposal to all the players that he wanted all the agents' contracts audited to make sure that they were only taking the 4% that they were supposed to get. Well, a guy by the name of David Falk from Don, uh, from uh, Pro Serve stood up and said that he thought this was uh, totally unfair. There was no need for this. Now, if you're doing what you're supposed to do and you're taking the 4%, no problem. But do you know that Magic Johnson, James Worthy, and Patrick Ewan stood up in support of David Falk and walked out of the room? Now, these are the guys that we're talking about role models and heroes. Magic Johnson, the guy that represents Magic Johnson, is a former ball boy and towel boy with the L.A. Lakers. Now, it seems like Magic should be learning from the state of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who got taken to the cleaners and had to file bankruptcy, and so many other players around the NBA. Why is this? That these guys seem to be living in a twilight zone, uh, Jim. They seem like this. They think that this stuff is going to last forever, man. And I was very disappointed because uh, Isaiah Thomas tried to stop Magic from walking out. And you know Isaiah is his main man. Say, Magic, we got other things to discuss. Magic said he had to go and feed his family, that he didn't have time for this mess. So those are the kind of things that are happening, man, that the public are not made aware of. And uh, we need to get our act together. And I don't see us getting together with the likes of Magic Johnson and the, and the Sugar Ray Lennox and them, man. We in big trouble, Jim. Well, I'm sure uh, that I wanted you to tell that story because I think you told it to me before. Mm -hmm. And it is an example of the things we have to face. And I would like to say to your public, uh, Harold, it's no longer uh, in vogue where we say, look, brothers, you can't talk about each other because it's mm -hmm. not now. See, talking about each other is not what we're doing. We're pointing out the things that are detrimental to a race of people. Because how can we as a race of people cry the blues to the white man about not hiring us, not allowing us to uh, coach in his, on his team and all of these things when he has right under him an example of young men who do not care, do not understand how to reinvest and to stimulate black economics. Jim, another good example to what's happening to uh, us in this country is that by the year 2000, Jim, we're not even going to be, uh, we're going to be third class. Uh, the Hispanics are going to be the number one minority in this country. That means all the money that we've been getting, receiving from the government are going to minorities. Now, we've got the 1990 census coming up. And uh, another example of Miami again. There were several uh, uh, per athletic personalities that I approached in Miami about doing a spill for the Census Bureau. Since I'm doing some PR for Census and working for them for the 1990 Census, I approached several players. And uh, guys like Warren Moon was very cooperative, Casey Jones, uh, let's see who else, uh, that Earl Monroe, uh, Olden Polonese. And all this is is a, P a PSA to say, hey, brothers and sisters, we need to be counted in the 1990 census because it can help it may provide better roads in your community, help get your daycare centers, help with better hospital care, uh, more law enforcement. If you're not counted, don't give them an excuse to say, well, they weren't counted. We can't give them the money. So anyway, I think Michael Jordan is an outstanding brother. I think he's a great brother. I think he, his heart is in the right place. But, Jim, when you've got people around you, so-called handkerchief heads, as I call them, who don't pull your coattail, 
Michael cannot do everything, but there are certain things that he needs to do. And like the, the PSA is a good example. Michael said that he couldn't do the PSA because it interfered with his Wheaties contract and Nike contract. Now, I hate to think that the brother would allow his, his lawyer or agent to put something like that in his contact and his contract where he could not help uh, the people that he had known or his life and help to, to better their way of life. And this doesn't even cost him any money just to do a 15-second, 30-second uh, uh, PSA, Jim. And it's these kind of uh, people that are hanging around these athletes, so-called brothers who are hanging on for the glory themselves, and uh, not pulling the brothers' coattails. So a lot of times we can't blame uh, the black athlete because we're shielded away from them, and we've got to go through their agents, and their agents don't want us nowhere near. Well, that athlete has to decide who's going to represent him. And I'm sure that uh, a lot of our athletes do read a newspaper each day or listen to TV, listen to the news, and I'm sure that... Uh, when they decide on an agent, they go through a lot of uh, soul searching and research. Uh, so maybe we can't blame the athlete, but how can you give me such an eloquent uh, uh, history of Jackie Robinson and give your audience such an eloquent history of Jackie Robinson? And that was in the 40s. And this man was able to do all of those things and become one of our greatest activists, one of the greatest fighters for the rights of black people. Are you saying from 44 <laughs> to 90 that these young men don't understand anything? Yeah, that's, that's kind of wild, Jim. You know, one of the... Uh... Now, it's a combination of things. I'm not cutting you off. Yeah. It is a combination of things. But, you know, we can always cry ignorant. Mm -hmm. We can always cry ignorant. And if we cry ignorant, and we really are ignorant, then there has to be a reason for that also. Uh, I can't cry ignorant. I don't think that anyone is responsible for me or the knowledge that I must seek out. I understood early, Harold, that if I didn't understand something about who I was or understand that my power is in my people and understand that it's not, if all people are not free, then nobody is free. These are basics. If you look at nature, you understand that. So I don't know if the propaganda machine since the 40s when Jackie based the sacrifice of life have been working so that we can say that Magic Johnson uh, cannot be blamed. I don't know how. Yep. Well, that was Jim Brown. And uh, as predicted back in uh, 1990, that um, Hispanics would be the number one minority in the country, uh, replacing African Americans. Uh, we're still behind the eight ball. We still have not found a way uh, to get enough, uh, whether they're athletes, whether politicians, whether entertainers, or black folks to reach back in the community and network. We still, uh, once we get our own, we disappear. So it's an uphill battle. And um, hey, we just got to stay in the fight. Just got to stay in the fight. So that's going to be it for this uh, segment of uh, Legends of Inside Sports, and uh, I'll be right back.